If you love chocolate, you are gonna love this recipe. Hi, I'm Lindsay from My Better Batch, and one of my very favorite cookies to make and to eat is a soft, chewy sugar cookie. Today, we've upped our sugar cookie game with the addition of chocolate. This cookie bakes up tall with a nice soft center. It's got a crisp outer edge. It is buttery, it is sweet with a hint of vanilla. Let's get baking. Sugar cookies are typically made with a base of flour, sugar, butter, eggs, and vanilla. One distinct feature of a sugar cookie is its high proportion of sugar to other ingredients. This gives a sugar cookie its distinct sweet flavor and also helps achieve a crispy outer edge. In this recipe, we're gonna use brown sugar instead of granulated sugar. This moisture rich sugar is gonna help us achieve a soft and tender cookie. Here's what you'll need, unsalted butter, light brown sugar, eggs, vanilla extract, all-purpose flour, unsweetened cocoa powder, salt, and baking soda. So first we're gonna add one cup of softened butter into the base of our stand mixer. We're gonna cream this butter with one and a half cups of light brown sugar. I'm using a stand mixer today, but you can use a hand mixer. You could put a little elbow grease into it and mix it by hand. Um, any of those will do. Using my mixer with the paddle attachment, I'm gonna cream the butter and the brown sugar together. I'd recommend starting the mixer on low until the ingredients are just combined before turning the speed to medium. This will avoid a big mess, trust me. Let the mixer run on medium for about four minutes. Creaming the butter and the sugar together is a really important step in this recipe, and it can take several minutes for the butter and sugar to combine, forming a light and fluffy texture. This requires a little bit of patience, which I'm working on. During this process, air is being incorporated into the mixture, believe it or not, as these ingredients are combining and before the sugar has fully dissolved. The sugar granules act as tiny blades that cut into the butter, creating small pockets of air. The more you beat the mixture, the more air you'll incorporate into it, which helps the cookies rise during baking. After about four minutes, scrape the sides of your bowl and the paddle attachment and turn the mixer back on medium for about another minute. At this point, you should have a light tan colored mixture that has a smooth and fluffy texture. You shouldn't be able to see any brown sugar or any tiny pieces of butter. Next, let's add two eggs, one at a time, to our mixture. Mix on medium until each is well combined. This should only take about 30 to 45 seconds. Add one teaspoon vanilla extract and give it one more mix to incorporate. So now we're gonna combine all of our dry ingredients into a medium sized mixing bowl. Two cups all-purpose flour, three-fourths cup unsweetened cocoa powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna blend these ingredients together using a whisk. Today I've used unsweetened cocoa powder, but you could also use Dutch processed cocoa powder. Natural unsweetened cocoa powder has a strong bitter chocolate flavor and is acidic in nature. It's usually called for in recipes that have baking soda as a leavening agent. I'm not gonna geek out on how baking soda and an acid like cocoa powder work together, but you can check out my video on the differences between baking powder and baking soda to learn more. The other type of cocoa powder is Dutch processed cocoa powder. This is made by treating cocoa beans with an alkali solution which neutralizes the acidity. Dutch processed cocoa powder is darker in color and has a smoother, milder flavor. Let's mix our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. You wanna be sure that all dry ingredients are fully incorporated. It's also pretty important to make sure that you're scraping down the sides of the bowl and the paddle. In the stand mixer, this should only take about 30 to 45 seconds to mix together each time dry ingredients are added. Your dough is ready when it looks like this. Yum! So I typically don't choose recipes that require chill time. I like to move pretty fast and don't like to wait, uh, but this recipe is just that good. So we're gonna pop it into the fridge for about 30 minutes before we scoop it and put it into the oven. Chilling the dough does a few things. Number one, it improves texture. Chilling the dough allows the fats in the dough to solidify, which stops cookies from spreading too much during baking. In addition to that, it's also easier to handle. Some cookie dough is sticky and difficult to scoop, drop, or shape at room temperature. Chilling for even 30 minutes will help the dough be much easier to handle. 
One thing I like to do if I'm not planning to bake them right away is to scoop all of the dough after it's been in the refrigerator. The dough is not too sticky, but it's still easy enough to work with. Today, I'm using a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop. If you don't have one, you should think about buying one. The scoop ensures that each and every cookie is the exact same size, which means they're gonna bake more evenly. I'm gonna start with six cookies on the cookie sheet. I like to do this for the first batch so I can get an idea of how much they're gonna spread. This will help you gauge whether you can add more to the cookie sheet for the next pan. You're gonna bake these cookies for about 10 to 11 minutes. I like to check them for the first time at the eight minute mark just to see how they're doing. Look at these. They've baked up nice and tall. They've got a nice crisp outer edge and they didn't spread too much while they were being baked. And we've got a few fun variations. We added some chocolate chips, we added some sprinkles, and then we put a Hershey Kiss in the middle and you've got four really easy, fun, different variations of the chocolate sugar cookie. These are chocolatey, they are rich, they're buttery, and as far as I'm concerned, they are delicious. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. I'm Lindsay from My Better Batch and thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please make sure you subscribe and give us a like. Enjoy. Uh, I can do the moonwalk out of the scene. <laughs>